Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over our winner thoughts number six. It's actually been two months since I've made one of these kind of winner update videos, so I'm very, very excited to be presenting this to you guys. We have a lot of information to go over. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know which month of the winter do you think is going to be the snowiest, December, January, or February, and we'll also throw in March just as a bonus one, just in case you think March is going to be the snowiest, that is a good answer, so let me know which one you think is going to be the coldest and snowiest in the comments down below, let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at a probably very confusing map to most of you. And this is our 500 millibar geopotential height. And we're actually looking straight down at the North Pole. So the entire Northern Hemisphere is visible here. It's a very good view to be able to tell the pattern uh, of the entire Northern Hemisphere. So what we're going to be taking a look at here is our AO, our Arctic Oscillations. So you have to look at the very middle of the screen here. You see how there's a lot of blues in there? That's indicating a positive AO. So it's very confusing, but if there's negative heights and negative temperatures that would indicate a positive AO and if there is well positive temperatures and positive heights that would indicate a negative AO I'm gonna just I'm gonna explain this a lot better in just a moment so stay tuned for that all right now let's go ahead and move on one and this is an example of a negative AO and take a look at all those reds in the middle and then the blues heading all over the place elsewhere that's a negative AO and it causes cold temperatures to move away from the Arctic as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you guys some illustrations that'll really clarify this for most of you. All right, so I made these actually a few months ago. I made these in the springtime and they're really low resolution now because I actually deleted the original files for this. So I had to kind of screenshot my own videos to get these maps back, unfortunately. So that's why they're a little tiny bit blurry. Uh, they're still pretty okay, but they could be a lot more clear. So here's a negative AO, and as you can see, uh, the the red circle there indicates the area where there's positive temperatures, so above normal temperatures pretty much all over the Arctic Circle. And then the blue arrows are indicating where the cold air came from and where it's now headed, and you can see it's basically heading away from the Arctic Circle in all different directions. So you can see there's some for Canada, there's some for uh, the United States, there's one there for Europe, and portions of Russia and then the other side of Russia as well heading into also Asia there as you can see so a lot of separate regions are seeing colder than normal conditions here but definitely not the Arctic that's a negative AO pattern very classic and we didn't see this at all last winter by the way this is the number one teleconnection that you're going to want to pay attention to it pretty much dictates most of the winter of uh, the NAO and the PNA are important but not quite as important as the AO in my opinion the AO is the number one most important factor in the winter season we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move on we're going to show you guys what a positive AO would look like and the conditions it would cause and then we're going to start talking about snowpack which is another very crucial uh, key element to the upcoming winter Now, I love making videos like this because I feel like it helps you guys understand this information, and this is the type of stuff I'm going to be talking about for years to come, uh, and I'm not always going to explain it this in detail, so I think it's very cool that you guys get the opportunity to learn more about it, so when you hear me say negative or positive AO, I hope you guys uh, just have a little bit more of an understanding of exactly what I'm talking about, but here's a positive AO. And as you can see, all those greens and purples are indicating very far below normal temperatures in the Arctic Circle there. And you can see it, it can be oddly shaped. This one's kind of shaped like an avocado, uh, but it can be very uh, circular as well. But in this case, on this frame that I took a picture of, uh, it was kind of uh, oddly shaped. But you kind of get the point. Very far below normal temperatures over the Arctic Circle and then warmer than normal conditions surrounding that area like a donut. Um, so that would pretty much hinder the ability for those below normal temperatures to go anywhere except for the Arctic Circle. So you can see that if we were stuck in a positive AO pattern, how it would really just ruin uh, the rest of the pattern as far as cold and snow is concerned. I'm telling you, we saw a positive AO from the 15th of December all the way through March last winter. I kid you not, there was not an, a single exception that's why it was so warm last winter. Uh, it it was stuck in a positive AO the entire winter. I've never seen anything like it. It's very odd for it to stay that consistent 
in a positive AO. I don't think we will see anything like that ever again. Fortunately, I, it's very rare. You can have prolonged amounts of times. So you can have a month or so of positive AO, but to have three full months of a positive AO is very, very unusual. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about another one that's very, very crucial. We're going to start talking about our snowpack and how it impacts the temperatures. All right, now this is a very crucial thing as well. Like I said, the AO is the absolute most important. Uh, I think it goes in this order, I would say. Uh, it goes Arctic Oscillation, or AO, then ENSO, which is El Nino, La Nina, and then I would say probably PNA would come in third place, and then NAO, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation. That one can go either way, and as long as you have a negative AO and a positive PNA, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, it helps with nor'easters tracking closer to the coast, but in years where you're not really expecting too many, uh, it's not too huge of a factor. And then comes snowpack right after that. Snowpack is going to be very crucial because this is going to tell us a lot about why. You can see on the left, we have no snow. We have no snow on the ground there in that illustration, and 70% of the sunlight gets absorbed. Uh, so that heat is really going to stick around, uh, and only 20% of that gets reflected. But as we take a look at the right right now, as you can see, when it has snow, when it has that ice around, you can see only 10 to 15% of that sunlight gets absorbed and 85 to 90% of it gets reflected back up. So you can see how cold, you, if you, you probably actually experienced this yourself. You know how if there's a big snow, the next day is always extremely cold? Well, one, that's usually because you need a ton of cold for it to actually snow in the first place. But also it's gonna make it very hard for it to become warm. It's going to be much harder for it to become warm over your area if you have a huge snowfall. Those, those days after a big snowstorm are always very, very cold. And it's because of this reason. That sunlight is not being absorbed. It's all reflecting back up. All right? And that's very crucial. And we're going to need to see that coming up very soon because we're going to be talking about this a lot. Because right now, this is the time of year where we start to see that snowpack really build in for Canada and the Arctic regions. Over the coming weeks, it's going to be very crucial, and it's going to impact how our November and December goes, because if we don't get a lot of snowpack in Canada and the Arctic regions, there's going to be a limited source of that cold to come down, because all of that sunlight is being absorbed up there. So it's not going to be as cold compared to normal. If you have a massive snowpack for Canada, Arctic, and you know, in through Russia as well, well, all of a sudden, those Arctic blasts that come through into the United States are going to be extremely cold because none of that sunlight has been absorbed. It's all been reflected, and it's just brutally cold. That's why it impacts us, what the snowpack is like up north. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at what our current snow cover looks like, so our snowpack. And then we're also going to take a look at how much snow we're expecting through the next week or so to add on to that. And then we might take a look at some of our climate models a little bit if we have time and take a look at what they're showing and see if their patterns kind of add up to what we're talking about. So here we are taking a look at the current snow cover. And this is a pretty typical amount to have uh, in late September. Usually you start to see it build a little bit. And this is what we're taking a look at. This compares quite nicely to years past. So we're right on pace uh, for a normal amount of snow cover right now. So there's nothing to be concerned about right now as far as that. We have a little bit there for Alaska, northern Canada, and obviously Greenland is covered in it. Uh, and that's, again, very typical. Now, here's the snowfall we're expecting over the next 252 hours through Monday, October 5th. And as you can see, a lot of Canada is going to gain a lot of snow cover here. Uh, and a lot of Alaska as well, as well as Russia, Greenland. So this is only going to add on to that. And it's going to, again, create less absorbed sunlight and more reflected sunlight, which is going to create colder conditions over these regions, which will in turn uh, allow for colder Arctic outbreaks later on for the United States. Because when we have an Arctic outbreak, it's coming from these regions with the snowpack. That's what you have to remember. It's coming from the North Pole all the way down to the United States in a matter of a couple of days. So the amount of snow up there and the amount of absorbed sunlight and reflected sunlight directly impacts the temperatures we feel here down in the United States. Even if we don't have the snowpack down here, the snowpack up above impacts us. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you guys. Now, real quickly, I want to take a look at one frame and I want to talk about why this doesn't make any sense. Here is the European seasonal models winter forecast, December, January, February. 
Uh, and if you've really paid attention, you might notice that there is a negative AO being forecasted here. We see tons of warmer than normal conditions over the Arctic regions. So we have a negative AO set up overall for the winter. That's great. But take a look at the surrounding regions. It's not forecasting the cold to go anywhere. Here's the thing that's wrong with this. Cold doesn't just cease to exist, okay? It doesn't just go away and then there is none. It's going to go somewhere. It's either going to be over the Arctic or it's going to go to surrounding regions. There's not going to be above normal temperatures everywhere. This model is confused. It has something is wrong with its calculation. And I've been seeing this model do this for, for years now. Last winter didn't even look like this. You might think it did because of how it felt, but there was far below normal temperatures over the Arctic Circle last winter because, again, we had a positive AO that didn't allow that cold to come down. If you have this look, you would see cold conditions all over the place for Canada, Europe, Russia, uh, varying where it's at, but it's going to go all over the place. It's not going to cease to exist like this. So that's why it's crucial to not really pay attention to these seasonal models if they're showing something that just does not actually make sense from a climate standpoint or a science standpoint. If it doesn't make sense, if it doesn't add up, don't use it. Uh, for now, this what I take away from this the most is that it's calling for a negative AO. That's the most crucial thing to take away from this. Uh, and maybe where they're showing neutral temperatures is where there would be below normal temperatures. I don't really know because it's hard to dissect something that doesn't even make sense in the first place. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, and that's why you shouldn't be concerned when these models are showing above normal temperatures, because it doesn't really add up when we're taking a look at the teleconnections, when we're taking a look at the snowpack, the things that actually impact how the winter goes. This model is clearly trying to show both at once, and that's not how it works. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let's get into the comment of the day real quick. And first things first, I asked you guys, what is the coldest temperature you felt so far this cold season and Adam Sheets said our lowest temp was 25 degrees Fahrenheit last week in northern Pennsylvania. I didn't even know it got that cold. I wasn't able to confirm if this was true or not but if that is the case that is extremely cold and that is a huge difference from last September isn't it because I remember Pennsylvania uh, was not quite that cold last September at all. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Bird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.